I think over the years you just start to realize what sounds good. Harmonic exciters, you know, uh, certain compressions, certain plug-in compressors, certain EQs, um, and things like this that you're building value. Now, in this studio, we definitely have some some hardware that we always uh, incorporate in the song. And I want to talk about what we're doing so I can sort of map it out and then just sort of let it run over and over again so we can hear the differences of what's happening. Um, the first thing I want you to know is I'm going to have the EQ section of a 1073, the preamp. So we're actually giving it a little more gain. Now in this in this situation, I'm going to tell you this, okay, if I was getting ready, I'm waiting for this gentleman to, uh, for the finances and everything to come through, so I'm sort of just playing around just to get a concept. But... Um, I would decrease the gain on all these tracks, and I can do that real quick, but, but we're getting into a little more time. This, this was recorded very hot, okay? Um, the proper recording should be, um, when it comes into the system, it should be almost at the bottom line in the Pro Tools session. So what I mean is about halfway up. That's around negative 18 dBFS, and then when you're pushing into that, that's, that's usually where the mastering engineer takes over and, and increases that headroom with stuff like a manly or... Uh, you know something that can do that in a way where it's not going to make it skinny. That's where a lot of guys screw up by the way They use like uh, and nothing against isotope by any means. I'm not saying that But when you start using a plug-in that that is known to be very tinny and shrill and um, I'm not saying isotope okay because isotopes a great company do not do not read into this and go Oh, this guy's bashing isotope. I'm not doing that. I'm saying a lot of guys have a small image to begin with so they're not feeding Isotope a huge image, and, and my goal is is to make it a, a more, um, this is what I meant by sound quality, a great sounding preamp has a lot of body to it, it's got a lot of beef, I mean like when you hear it it's huge, um, and the image is huge, so then we can compress that down and make that sound a lot better, so then it sounds better at louder volumes, it's, it's really crazy how that works. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to assign the uh, preamp section of the Neve, and the EQ, and I might mess around with the, the compressor, but we're going to have that on the one main rap vocal. There's another rap vocal, so we'll have the other Neve on that. Um, we're using it to match tone and bring it out of the, the instrumental more. Um, and then we added this cool effect. It's, it's pretty much like the effect that you would hear on that weekend track. Um, I didn't mean to do it. It just sort of fell in my lap as I was doing this song. I was like, wow, I want a little harmonic distortion. It would sound great with this track. And, and as you can tell, the, the instrumental is very similar. Um, so I start messing around with that. Now you'll hear on the chorus when I take it off. I mean, it's like night and day. What we did on the chorus, I'll talk about this real quick, is we put a little micro shift, um, which is really based off the H3000 from Eventide. And it... it gives you harmonics and it it gives you a increase in, in stereo field by using pitch manipulation and um, time based manipulation and, and, and it creates a chorus effect to make you sound big in stereo um, that's used a lot by the way and the CL 76 which is a, uh, a replication of an 1176 which I fortunately got to hear the real thing it does it's not the real thing I don't have one in the studio but um, my buddy Freddie does, and if I really need it, and you have a really high-end session, we can go over and use all the 11 sets. I think he's got like four of them, or five of them, or six of them, something like that. So, what we did was an auto-tune. We did a, a slap dynamic delay, so it's sort of like in time. And we still got to adjust that. We did a saturator. We did a little micro shift. And then we did the, the real hammer uh, of the limiter. Like, sometimes you want it to sound rock style. Like, rock to me, a rock vocal is really hit hard with a compressor. I mean, a lot of rock guys know that. Like, you hit it real heavy, you gain it in there, you give it the, the, the vibe that that piece gives off. And, and then you're, you're adjusting the output according. So you can overdo it. Like, right now, I still got to tweak it. But this is just a starting point of an instrumental uh, vocal stem session that a hip-hop artist sent me so you're gonna hear the differences and then I'll get back on and I'll talk to you about another session um, something totally different my coffee is pretty good so let me sorry that I'm not putting the live feed uh, sc uh, screen capture on that wasn't really the intent for today but what we're gonna do is just zoom right in there and I'm gonna go to it man I'm gonna I'm going to start bypassing and on-bypassing, 
Um, if you see on the screen, it says A5 and 6, and they're, they're inactive, and all the ones that are inactive right now, those are hardware pieces. 3 and 4, A3 and 4 is the massive passive, and we're going to EQ that a little bit. So um, here we go. What you were hearing there was just some basic, basic stuff. I mean, like, I'm not, you know, this isn't a, a video where I'm, you're intending, um, a full-blown mixing session obviously this is it's not funded yet so I'm just sort of tweaking with stuff but really what you were hearing was me bypassing and on bypassing and stuff like that where you have these effects that are just building new layers to the sound and what what you could really hear is the aggressiveness of the chorus like I actually started to believe what he was saying 
and I don't mean disrespect to him by any means. I'm just saying, like, when it has that rock sound, it sounds like he's on a microphone um, that's distorted, like he stole it from somebody, and he's like, he's screaming. So I'm always painting a picture in the in the studio. Like I always want a picture to come about. So when I listen back to the track, I'm like, man, there's something cool now. I might send this off. Now this is this is mixing, okay? In a stem session, a lot of times that stuff's already done. Like you've sent me the stem with that kind of effects and those things processed on there. So don't get this confused. That's what stem session is. In a stem session, you already have all that done. You have that mixing, that blending, that EQing, all that stuff. And then you send me those stems with that, and then I'll then I'll increase the uh, the image with this kind of equipment. So. I want to go into one more session. This is a church session. Now this is this is more lively. Now this the vocal, the mic that he used on that, I could tell it was a high quality mic. A lot of times we'll get a microphone that's very shallow, very, very distant, very dist it's just not there. So what we'll do is we'll save this one, we'll open up the church service I was working on. Now in this case, let me make sure I'm not off. But in this case, you're gonna have a live sound. A live microphone, as you'll hear here. Let me see if you can hear it. I gotta find out what's on and what's not on. I might have to turn the manly on. Um, so what we what we want to do here is increase the clarity and then compress the material. What I mean by that is. We want to use bus processing uh, a lot. Now in this case, we have two different signals. One is a Zoom H6 field mic with a microphone. It's like a, an XY mic that's like capturing the crowd in the back. And then in the front off the mixer, which is an Allen and Heath mixer, it's you know, it's not a knee mixer, it's 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 what most churches would use. We're running a feed out into the Apogee one. We're using this trusty little impedance transformer to convert the high Z level on the Apogee One. The reason I'm using an Apogee One is because it's it's more affordable. If somebody spilt something on it, it's not you know it's it fits in my backpack. I mean it's just a, a nice piece to own, um, but it's not going to have the headroom and the clarity and the definition and all that stuff that the uh, Symphony IO gives off. But the converter is is a very big part of your sound quality. It really is, and a lot of people don't get that. They, I didn't get it for years. But so we're going to talk about how important it is to blend and match these signals. So this is a totally different situation. This is totally different audio processing. So we have the first signal we have is the live sound. So what I'm going to do. You're not going to be able to hear what I'm going to have to do because you're not going to be able to hear the master bus, which has all the processing stuff on it. So what we'll do for this purpose is we'll put the Neves on here. Um, we'll put the Manly on here, and we'll let this be. We're going to take everything off the master bus because I, I, I think I'm sending you the headphone feed. Um, and plus I want to, I sort of want to start over because I've already finished this, so I'm not going to save the session. Um, so here's the manly on the crowd. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of blending. Now here's the cool thing about live sound, okay? When I get to master stuff like this, the engineer in the live situation usually EQs out what the the uh, room is boosting. So when you time up these two signals, what you're going to end up with is a, a pretty balanced sound. Um, it's sort of crazy if you think about that. Like the engineer listens to the song and starts to EQ stuff out or, or turn down the gain of the bass or this and that to compensate for the room, right? So when you take the room and you put it back in the recording and you do it with a decent recorder, like I'm, I'm saying you can do this for less than, you can't get this sound like with the Neve stuff we're about to do, but you can get a good good balance. Um, let me show you that mic real quick, hold on. So here's the zoom, hold on a second. So you know what captured this, it's just this thing here. It's just a small zoom H6. 
and uh, we had the XY mic on the front. Let me show you that too. So it's literally this in this. And before that service, I go in there and I put that on there and I put it on that tripod that the camera's on and I and I just I just set it up in the back of the room. Now left right balance is important. You want it almost in the center of the room if you can. You don't want it to peak, okay? You want it about I think like a a good good roll of thumb is like halfway up on the meter. It's a good roll of thumb on anything. You don't want it to be super, super loud because that will screw up a record real quick because then all of a sudden like you have this awesome record and all of a sudden you hear this distortion and you're like, hmm, cool. Um, and people hate distortion unless it's like harmonic distortion or it's like purposeful of distortion like we just did at the beginning of this video. So um, what we're going to do here is now you know this now the the Apogee one is still over at the church. I'm not I don't bring it back to the studio. Um, so the Apogee one I bought for like 300 bucks or something, but now it just, it stays on their mixer. I just bring my MacBook, um, and hook it up USB. So what you're going to hear is you're going to hear the, the crowd. I'm going to, I'm going to quit talking and you're going to hear the, the crowd and I'm just going to go for, start from scratch here and start to try to mend these two together and see what we can come up with. So what we'll be using is the Manly MU on the, on the live feed, just to give it a little more warmth, a little more body. And you're going to be using the need channels on the actual feed from the mixers. So this is super important. And, and you should take this live sound technique and you can apply it to the studio. Okay? Like, that's what I think we do in the studio. We find out in a live environment there is reverb. There are rooms. There is perception. There's depth. There's image. And, and when you start to figure that out as an artist... You start to find out that if you go in this room and you use this mic, you sound this way. And, and the greatest engineers and producers on this planet know this. So let's get into it before I, I go on a 40-minute tangent again. Um, so here we go. We're just going to start the live sound and, and go from there. And you'll get to hear me mixing.
We're here to celebrate Jesus Christ, amen, the resurrected Savior. Amen. Here's one we wrote a couple years back, amen. It says, Jesus is everything, amen. His name is wonderful, wonderful is Jesus. He's been so wonderful to me. Though I have praised him when I could, not always like I should. He has done me nothing but So I'm going to talk about some of the stuff I was doing down there as you're hearing sound changes. But one of the cool things you can do um, is just flip the phase, man. I flipped the phase on the on the need. Now, you were hearing when I was uh, bypassing 5 and 6. Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you. Like, I can do that. What's the gear? But 5 and 6 is the need. It's like, holy smokes, man. It becomes fat and big and nice to listen to and warm and and clear and defined and punchy and everything that everybody ever wants and that's why we bought that um no i'm not turning the channel i'm just pointing with this thing the eq7 band it just started to shelf some of the lows because i was starting to hear some of the rumble and the bass and and some of the phasing going on with the crowd um and then three and four is the ssl bus you guys probably really heard that and this like just shoot up now here's the thing i know somebody's gonna say doug i mean it's not the same volume i mean but when's the last time you used a piece of equipment for volume for just to keep it the same here there oh yeah it's better compression now let's keep it at the same volume a lot of times when I'm working, there, there's certain times I do that with the manly and stuff like that, or if it's already at a big level, it's already up in volume. But when we're mixing, I mean, we're usually hitting it and turning the gain up because that's part of the, the signal path and that's part of the, the steel and the iron and the copper and all that stuff that's working in there. So, I mean, the gain stage of this equipment is so much better than plugins. And, and I love plugins. Don't get me wrong. This is not a plug-in versus hardware debate. This is they both work. You can see I was using both. Um, but yeah, the increase in volume. So this is what mixing is after the fact. A lot of guys would just send this out. A lot of churches would just send it out with none of this processing. They'd be like, nah, whatever. We'll just put it out there. And people start listening to it. They're like, yeah, this is good. But, and it's sad, but true. But people will judge you based on that. Like this, the pastor here, I'm very good friends with him. He's got a great message. You know, Jesus came to this earth, died, and he rose again. And that's the best thing you can know. Because if you screwed up in life, you realize he already took that price for you. That's why he did that, by the way. If you guys are out there and you want to know, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be, you don't have to, you know, uh, go right towards it right now. But I'm telling you, think about that. He died for you. He was buried. They came to get him and he was gone. They went, where did he go? And this is true. It's documented in history if you're a history buff. 
and he rose again on the third day. So he took your sin, like you drinking, smoking, cussing, uh, murdering, stealing, thieving, conniving, uh, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Being too good. Oh, I'm too good. Um, he said, no, you're not. And uh, he died for you, and that's what the greatest message on this planet is. So if, if you learn anything from my channel, that's the most important thing to learn. I, I promise you. Um, so anyways, and if you get mad about it, think about why did you get mad about that? Just think about that. So anyways, because I didn't tell you you have to, you know, like some people get mad about that. And it's like, why would you get mad about that? It's because it's true. The truth is very hard to, to swallow sometimes. Let's get back to the video. I apologize. I just had to get that out of me, man. It was on my chest. So now you have this Maxim plugin, dude. This is one of my favorite Pro Tool stock plugins. But the Maxim plugin during this this program, you're gonna have the crowd. A lot of guys don't know how to do this. They're they're like, man, how do I get the crowd to come out? How do I get the the increase in volume to happen? Like because at one part, like I don't want the crowd to be big, and that's the trick about live audio. You can automate a lot. You can automate a lot of volume. But um, the the Maxim plugin is gonna take the high passes and, and, and bring them up, or take the low passes and bring them up to the high passes. So the crowd noise that was real low, when we hit it with the, the Maxim, it, it increases that headroom. Um, also, it's going to increase noise and things like that, but sometimes you got to sacrifice that and you got to say, well, what are we going to do here? The greatest mics on the planet have a very small or very low noise level. If you've never had a problem with noise, it probably means you're not processing audio right. That's the truth. Um, a7 and 8 is the manly on the live sound, so we'll do it and then I'll end the video and we'll fade to black. How about that? But I will show you the live sound and the manly is going to give it that warmth and it's just going to grab any transients. Like the live mic is already non-transient at all. There's no popping, no punching, no kicking. It's in the back of the room where all the muddy and, and mid-rangey stuff is real warm. So, um... What we did, like I could probably get away with no manly on there. I could probably try to warm it up with something else. But like if I use the SSL uh, dynamic module, it might make it sound a little bit too skinny. So what I'm doing in sense is complementing the room even further to make it bigger. Um, in that case, you probably could get away with no manly. But we have it here. Why not use it? And we could EQ some of the highs from the from the program material. We could do all kinds of stuff. But at this point. I'm satisfied and then we go on that is the stem mix that is not we're not mastered yet because this is where people get really really upset with me in the past I, I like send them what I have there and they go it's not loud and it's like dude you know how much time we just spent doing that and then we have to put on the compressor the the final mastering compressor and and we have to bring that the whole entire signal up to gain so it's like at zero, maybe negative 12 RMS, negative six, whatever the material is. So yeah, this is like, we're processing separate things. So when you listen back, man. So let's put that through the live feed and I'll turn it off once, you know, one more time. And, and that's, that's live audio. I'm not, I'm not a professional as far as, um, I guess what I'm saying is I am a professional, but I'm not doing a professionally, you know, 16 microphone, uh, uh, tracked out, 24 in, 24 out mixing console at the church. I mean, we're, we're doing a two track that you would expect to, to find from a basic church service. Does that make any sense? So this is just one recorder on your mixer, one recorder on, uh, on, the, on the back, on like a tripod. You merge them together, and this is what you get. Check it out. It's pretty cool. So my name is Doug Jenkins, imixamaster.com. God bless every last one of you, man. I want to see everybody succeed and, and, and do what you're supposed to do. I mean, do what you love.